It was six men of Hindustan, to learning much inclined, who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. The first approached the elephant, and happening to fall against his broad and sturdy side, at once began to bawl, God bless me, but the elephant is very like a wall. The second, feeling of the tusk, cried, Oh, what have we here? So very round and smooth and sharp, to me it is mighty clear. This wonder of an elephant is very like a spear. The third approached the animal, and happening to take the squirming trunk within his hands, thus boldly up he spake, I see, quoth he, the elephant is very like a snake. The fourth reached out his eager hand and felt about the knee. What most this wondrous beast is like is mighty plain, quoth he, is clear enough the elephant is very like a tree. The fifth, who chanced to touch the ear, said, Even the blindest man can tell what this resembles most. Deny the fact, who can? This marvel of an elephant is very like a fan. The sixth no sooner had begun about the beast to grope, than seizing on the swinging tail that fell within his scope, I see, quoth he, the elephant is very like a rope. And so these men of Hindustan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong, though each was partly in the right, and all were in the wrong. This concludes a poem by John Goodfrey Sachs, written in 1872, uh, of course, depicting the rather famous parable of the blind man and the elephant. As a sort of entry point into our topic of critical thinking that we will uh, continue to explore for the next uh, for the 12 weeks that we have together. Um, I thought that we could, uh, having presented this parable before us, I thought we could uh, attempt to uh, first understand the parable. Uh, what is it trying to uh, what is it trying to depict for us? Um, and also, at the same time as we are attempting to understand the parable, uh, we will also be attempting to um, reflect on our own process of understanding. And so if we're successful, not only will we have come to some, uh, to have, not only will we, will we have achieved some understanding of what this parable can mean, but we will also have learned something about our own uh, activity or process of arriving at this meaning. Right? And so uh, by the end of the lecture, I hope that that is a little bit, uh, has become a little bit clearer. Um, and so again, we can pose the question sort of, uh, in, in understanding this parable, but, but really uh, in understanding anything at all. What does it mean to understand something? It's clearly, um, in, as in the case of this parable, um, understanding is not really the same thing as being able to um, repeat the parable, uh, right? For example, this, um, I'm trying to record this if I'm successful, uh, you will be able to replay the recording. Um, the recording itself, though, despite that it can repeat this parable, that's not the same thing as, well, we, would ne we would never say that the recording understands this parable. It's just that it can, it can parrot the parable. Right? And so clearly understanding has something to do, it's something more than merely being able to repeat something. It's more than just, um, so understanding is not the same thing as, as just having the facts, is another way to put it. It has to do with, maybe this is obvious, but I think it's something we don't consider that often. Um, it has to do with understanding the meaning of the facts, right? So not just knowing the facts, but what the facts mean. Uh, and so we could, um, you know, if you had a factual account for, for what happened in this scenario that uh, the poem by Sachs depicts, um, that doesn't, you, you wouldn't uh, do very much with it unless you're willing to inquire for, for a meaning of those facts, a meaning of the story, right? And so, um, that being said, uh, it's a meaning of the story as a whole, uh, because, for example, it's, it's not the same thing as, well, suppose that a, a person might understand each word, understand the meaning of each word in a parable or in a sentence, for example, but maybe not understand the parable as a whole. Right? So, so a second thing that we can consider is that um, understanding has, uh, it's more than just, um, yeah, it's more than being able to understand the parts. It has to do with being able to understand the whole of which those things are parts. 
And so understanding is a sort of, it's partly, it, it's partly a, a process of interpretation uh, rather than just repetition. Right? It has to do with um, of internalizing something in ourselves and discovering a meaning. Yeah. One thing that can prevent us, and, and this is a way that we can, um, again, approach this specific parable again. One thing that can prevent us from coming to an understanding of uh, this parable, and then also uh, by extrapolation, anything at all. One thing that can prevent us from understanding is um, basically to assume that we've already understood, right? Or to assume that, um, yeah, to assume that we already know something is a sure way. Uh, it's a, it's a way to ensure that we won't learn anything new, right? And then uh, so we can see this this parable. It's so uh, it's so evocatively depicts just this kind of mistake that we all fall into in so many different ways. Which is um, well, so each of these each of these fellows approaches the elephant, and basically, uh, after an initial encounter, a tactile encounter, assumes that um, he already knows the answer, right? Um, he already knows uh, what it is that he's confronting. It's clear that that uh, this conclusion, this sort of preemptive conclusion, uh, immediately, in some way, um, terminates the process of, of understanding or of learning. The process of, it, it arrests the process of learning uh, the minute that that one of these uh, one of these fellows arrives at what he takes to be a, a, a conclusion, and so in some ways, um, yeah, a conclusion is sort of the death of learning. Um, um, there's a famous one of the, uh, in fact, the, the person who gave philosophy its name. That's Plato. Um, he is very famous for having written that philosophy begins with wonder, and so um, sort of like the, the origin from which philosophy begins is uh, is kind of like not knowing, but wishing to know. Yeah. It's no wonder. Um, we can go a little bit more, uh, we can consider in a little bit more specificity, uh, like what exactly goes wrong for these, these fellows in the parable? And uh, on the same note, then we can, well, one way this might serve us is, is that we will be maybe a little bit less likely to fall into the same errors in our own lives, if we can uh, sort of see them presented before us uh, through this parable, one one way to think about how they go wrong is is that uh, they basically um, each of them has a certain standpoint on the elephant, right? Uh, but from that standpoint, each one of them um, extrapolates his uh, specific standpoint uh, and and imagines that that specific standpoint represents the whole or he, he confuses standpoint with understanding. And so in some way we can think of understanding as always striving beyond mere standpoint. It's always striving to, to integrate um, diverse standpoints, right? And basically the, the, the standpoints, they will appear to be at odds with one another. They will appear to even be maybe uh, more than at odds, maybe even contradictory, right? It's clear that if, if something, uh, returning to the parable, if something is a wall, it's not also a spear, and it's not also a rope, and it's not also a snake. Uh, it's one thing or the other thing. Uh, and so, uh, but when understanding is achieved, and uh, and then we we comprehend the fact that no, 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 it's it's actually none of those individual things. It's an elephant that, in some way, um, I mean, this is somewhat uh, elastic use of this word, but it uh, the elephant includes and transcends all of those, uh, the, the spear, the wall, the um, et cetera, the rope. Uh, each of the, none of those things, uh, it doesn't make sense how each of those things hangs together until we have uh, understood what is at stake. And then it makes perfect sense. It follows very naturally how each of these, uh, these individual blind men falls into the error that he in fact does. So one way to think of, uh, again, how they how they go astray in their process of understanding is by a sort of um, presumptive extrapolation of a single uh, aspect to include the whole. Um, another way to think of this um, on a similar but a related note is to think of a, a, another fallacy, which is um, sort of uh, failure, to, uh, failure to grasp the cause. What I mean by that is, um, is the elephant is causing, 
uh, the elephant as a whole is causing each of those diverse uh, tactile experiences. Right, so the one that the one tactile experience that's akin to a wall, the next that's akin to a spear, the next that's akin to a, a rope, uh, and so on and so on. Um, the elephant is the the origin of all of those things. Uh, the the trouble is none of none of these blind men uh, is able to attain to grasp that cause as a whole. Uh, rather, each of them is kind of I don't know a stuck downstream with an effect of that cause. To really understand something means to grasp. Uh, grasp the way the cause uh, generates the effect, and not only to grasp the effect. Mm -hmm. We can also think of uh, we can also think of a, another way of describing how these blind men go wrong. We can think of it as uh, they lack. We can think of it as a, a fallacy of vision or a deficiency of vision. They lack the idea that there could be something more than their specific experience. All right, so. The one that that uh, that has a tactile sensation that he immediately ascribes to a rope. Uh, this person uh, lacks the um, is unwilling to entertain the idea that there could be something more to the elephant than something with which he's already familiar. And so, so again, we we, we sort of uh, have returned to a, a point from from earlier, which is that uh, this preemptive conclusion or premature conclusion it preempts any kind of further learning, right? It, it basically it arrests it, it terminates it in the process. Uh, and, so, um, and so again, uh, in order to, to, well, to turn this around, um, if a person was able to start with the idea of an elephant, it would be most patently obvious um, how each of those diverse aspects or how, each, how the elephant itself as a whole the idea of the elephant itself can give rise to and generate each of those individual standpoints. Yeah. But, that, but that's not where the, the blind men are starting from. And, you know, by inference or by, by association, that's not where we're standing. Or by analogy is probably the most accurate way to put it. By analogy, that's not where we're standing either in respect to whatever it is that the elephant represents. Um, we don't start out with uh, with, we don't start out at the end of our inquiry. We start at the beginning. But uh, we have to always remember, these, uh, the, as these blind men uh, helpfully illustrate for us through, the, through their own uh, failure, that they, uh, they, they, uh, they, sacrifice their own, uh, they sacrifice their own insight uh, for our sake, if we're willing to learn from, from them. Um, they... Uh, what we can always do is uh, never assume that um, that where we we can always sort of orient ourselves towards towards uh, what we don't already know, and that way we will make ourselves receptive to learning something further. Now, uh, suppose that we 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 try to say um, what do, what does the elephant represent? Obviously, this is a parable, and a parable by its nature is a sort of analogy. Like it presents certain images before us, uh, but the images themselves, um, they're not exhausted in their, it's like their literal uh, referent does not exhaust their meaning or their significance, right? So, uh, so the elephant, we can ask a couple questions, like what does the elephant itself represent? And suppose that I just uh, propose that the elephant represents truth. Yeah. And uh, blind men, um, represent all of us, uh, sort of uh, groping around for the truth. Um, but, uh, but you know, truth is not something you exactly see with your eyes. You, uh, it's something that you, um, you see through your, um, through your mind or through your intelligence. Uh, and so in some way we can, we can put ourselves in this condition of, of blindness, blind, uh, blindness of the mind, so to speak. But um, as long as we know we're as long as we know that we're blind, then we can, we can again uh, seek to seek to gain uh, vision that we don't already have. So uh, to turn that around again, because that might seem contradictory or confusing, to turn it around, uh, if we don't um, if we don't acknowledge our if we don't acknowledge that we don't already have access to the truth, we won't find ourselves at all inclined to seek it. Yeah, we will become sort of complacent. And assume that uh, we already uh, know everything there is to know, and 
And if we have any questions, then uh, then Dr. Google Google Dr. Google can just uh, resolve those questions for us, and we don't really need to bother. That's a sure way to uh, remain complacent and basically ensure that uh, we won't learn anything new. So again, these bind men, we can use them as a sort of inspiration to always be, um, uh, you know, uh, placing ourselves in, in the position of ignorance, so that from there we can aspire to knowledge. If we presume to possess the knowledge already, we won't value it and we won't recognize it uh, when it when we encounter it, because we'll we'll presume that that uh, well that it's not there because we already have it. So we can think of the elephant again as a symbol of truth, and we can ask ourselves, inquiring individually, and and every time we we come together um, in our meetings, we can say, um, how do we each uh, how do we each uh, contribute in a, in a, any given question? How uh, how does each of us contribute uh, his or her own unique and individual and irreplaceable and necessary standpoint. Uh, but how do we, how do we sort of, uh, um, how do we, how do we um, contribute it or offer it? Or how do we submit our own standpoint? Uh, how do we submit that standpoint to uh, the, to, for the sake of understanding, right? Again, the, the, the error that the blind men fall into is they try to they try to get understanding to submit to the standpoint. Uh, that's um, again that that's uh, that prevents them from really apprehending the nature of the elephant. Um, and so similarly, if we can say, how does every uh, individual standpoint? How can we how can we uh, try to orient each individual individual standpoint towards a uh, integral or integrated understanding of what's at stake? And so um, I thought this this parable was a good, again, a, a good keynote sort of for for this course in particular, and in some ways for any uh, course that involves any sort of discussion, yeah. because what it does in some way it gives us a model um, for for how to how to proceed if we if we value understanding higher than standpoint. And I think each of us can uh, just in a moment's reflection. Uh, we can probably bring to mind uh, at least a number of instances in sort of discussions that we found ourselves involved um, in which uh, the, uh, the opposite was the case. In other words, a uh, standpoint was regarded as the highest, you know, the, the thing that is worth defending at all costs. Uh, and of course, the first cost, uh, the first cost is always going to be understanding whenever that's the case. Um, now, just before I conclude this this uh, first short lecture, I would like to um, I would like to pose before us a question, and and this question can um, help as a question that we can carry with us uh, further uh, in the, into the future, and it's and maybe the question can even be like a um, like a like a portal or a doorway into um, further exploration of this this topic of critical thinking. I offered um, certainly not the only in interpretation of uh, the elephant as um, as a sort of uh, symbol of truth, and so um, now there's a one thing to notice about a symbol is that it's um, it's not the same. It doesn't uh, it's it doesn't look the same. It, it doesn't resemble what it's symbolizing, right? So truth doesn't really have a shape. But the elephant stands. The elephant does. The elephant, as a shape, stands in for truth. That is, it's just not the kind of thing that has a shape, right? Um, another example, like so, I'm wearing a bandana. The ban bandana uh, symbolizes the corona pandemic. Yeah, the, the bandana is it's for a mask, right? The the mask or the bandana, that's not the same. Sh that's not the same shape as the corona crisis. It doesn't make sense to think of the corona pandemic as having a shape uh, in the first place, right? But, and so we see there's a certain relation between uh, the sort of symbol and the, 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 um, the meaning or the idea that the symbol refers to. It's a, it's a specific relationship, but it's not a, um, it's not a, it's not a, based on an analogy of, of, of shape. Um, it's based on an analogy of something more subtle. Uh, and this is something that I hope that as the course goes on, 
we can at least um, we can at least wonder about and maybe achieve some some deeper understanding of what is actually um, what is the relation between a symbol and uh, what it's symbolizing. But suppose so I uh, offered the, the elephant as a uh, an interpretation of the elephant represents truth. And now, so and the elephant is of course a particular object within this parable. Now here's the question that I would like to pose before us, and I believe that this question is a question that um, that by uh, it's it will be just as fresh today as it will be uh, 12 weeks from now. And I don't think this is a question that uh, it's it's like a um, it's like the wish fulfilling cow or or the, the bottomless well that will always be uh, giving more. And this question I think can never be. Um, it will never run dry, so to speak. This question is, um, so again, the elephant represents truth. The elephant is an object within the parable. What does the parable as a whole represent? So not only the, ele the elephant, but quote, the parable of the blind man and the elephant as a whole thing. What is this parable depicting for us? Yeah. What kind of thing is this parable a symbol of or an image of? Or a representation of, yeah. and so I gave the, the example: the elephant is a representation of truth. The mask is a representation of Corona crisis. What is the parable of the blind man and the elephant a representation of? And so I think that's a good place to end this lecture. I hope that um, uh, I suppose more than anything, I hope that it's um, that it's left us with. Uh, rather than any answers, I hope that it's left us with fruitful, fruitful, um, fruitful questions. So, uh, best wishes to everyone. Until next time.